This video is the fourth video in my new series on wheel throwing. If you haven't seen the steps before this, I do show wedging, I show centering, I show dropping the middle and opening, and this is step four, which is pulling the centered wall to get height. The next video following this will be how to shape the thinned form into more of an interesting form. And as I mentioned before, remember to go slowly and evenly with your hand motions because again, any stage of throwing, you take your hands off quickly and you're going to throw it off. So like if I'm, if I'm just kind of squeezing it, I take my hands off quickly, I can throw it off. So you need to just slowly release. All right, once your clay is centered, and opened, then you might want to try the trick of recentering your wall before you start pulling. So, recentering the clay involves creating pressure on all sides. So, in other words, you're going to have pressure down from the top, pressure from the outside, pressure from the inside, and in turn, pressure from the bottom because you're pushing down, right? So, the idea is if I create a very stable channel through which the clay is going to spin, then I can recenter it. Now, I'm just going to stand sideways so you can see my hand here. So I'm creating a channel that is going to be the uh, left hand, the fingertips are on the inside, the left thumb is on the outside. And then I'm going to be pressing down with my right hand and I'm using my sponge to make sure I have added water. So you can see now I have like this great little like 90 degree angle that I'm going to be making. And I'm going to lock my hands together. I'm pushing down with the right, squeezing in with the left and any off centeredness that you had in your wall should be remedied by uh, doing that trick on recentering. If you want to see a more thorough explanation of recentering, I will link um, a video here. So if you if you look uh, up in your screen, you'll see a link for that video now. Now, once you have your wall recentered, now you're ready to actually pull it up. And this is pulling a, just a simple cylinder from an open piece of clay. Now. Up until this point, my left hand has been the side hand, right? And my, my right hand helped to open it. But now I am going to be using my left hand as the interior hand, right hand as the exterior hand. And we're going to be compressing the fingers together as we slowly pull up the wall and stabilize the rim when you get to the top. So lock your hands together. You can um, always make sure that your elbows are locked. So if you're sitting again, lock your elbows to your thighs. I'm standing, so I'm, I've got my elbows locked to my side. I could lean and I could lock them to my splash pan. But my hands are locked together and I start at the very base of the wall, both the inside and the outside. And I'm just going to compress, squeezing together as I pull my fingers upward. And that squeezing action is going to force the extra clay upward and your hands have to be locked again so you don't throw that wall off. So let's try that again. I'm going to squeeze as my hands are locked together and as I pull up. Now, when you get to the top edge, gently stabilize that before you remove your hands. One of the things that my kids struggle with is as they do this, they forget about locking their hands. And I say this every step of the way, lock your elbows, lock your hands, that sort of thing. But if you are doing this and your hands are not locked and they're just independent, it's very difficult for a beginner to keep them stable. So try to lock them, especially if you're a beginner. 
Now, what the other thing is sometimes my kids make a pull and they go way too fast and they like create this giant spiral up the side of it, which is fine for a decorative accent. But if you're trying to pull the wall, that's probably going to work against you. So I'm going to just put a little line here with my uh, fingernail so you can see that little vertical line. As I go around on this next pull, I'm going to go slowly enough that I can press right over that vertical line. If you go too fast, that vertical line is going to remain there. And again, when you get to the top, stop edge, just kind of stabilize that edge. Occasionally you might get a little chunk of slip on there. If, if that happens, you just kind of get that off. Now, remember that friction is your enemy. So as you do this, you always want to make sure that you have plenty of water so you don't have friction. And then even here, I'm locked. So let me come around to the side. So even here, I'm locked. So I am doing this. If this were a clock face, to me, I'm doing it at about probably about 3 o'clock. And again, my hands are locked. Just by taking my thumb, it helps me to stabilize and keep them together. Now, as you are throwing, if you end up by having a water accumulation and a puddle on the inside, you might want to get that out before it gets too much. Oh, and I should have mentioned, as this goes around, I'm looking for that little vertical line. And it's totally gone because I compressed over it with one pull. I forgot to look after uh, after I did that pull. Now, part of uh, throwing is learning to have a nice sensitive touch. So you are always keeping the base of the wall just a little bit thicker than the top until the very end and then you even it out. So at this point, I still have a thickness to the wall down here at the base and I would like to use a little bit more pressure to try to thin out the base of the wall. You have to have a sensitivity to how thick are your walls. If you press too much, you're going to thin it out in a spot. You want to have nice, consistent, even pressure. And if you feel that you have a thin area, back off on your pressure in that. Okay. And then... Let's do one more pull here. I'm really, oh, and I should say, this is the first time I can't lock, I can't lock my hands together because my thumb won't, thumb won't reach. And I also had to raise my elbow. So depending on the height of your form, you might have a little bit of issue, but you just have to be super stable and keep them together. Now, that is just pulling, right? I have my students begin by pulling cylinders before they pull bowls. The reason for that is I think you learn more from pulling a cylinder than you do from a bowl. Bowls are one of the easiest forms to do because they often happen on accident. Centrifugal force will want to pull everything out. So as you're doing a cylinder, you want to concentrate on keeping it going straight up instead of flaring like a bowl. Now one of the things that you can do to kind of rein it in a little bit is what's called collaring. So here I'm just adding a little bit of water to the exterior. You can see that this is flaring out just a little bit up here at the top. So collaring is when you add some water and then you just take your hands and you're going to bring it in a little bit. Now that is not a pull. I'm not pulling up the height. I was just collaring it in to bring it in and bring it a little bit more uniform. Now one thing that I always tell the kids is after you collar and go back and do one more pull after you collar just to help compress. If you um, collar over and over or if you collar a whole bunch, you're going to have a tendency to get some stress wrinkles, which is not good. You don't want stress wrinkles. Uh, you want to have it nicely compressed, nice, nicely, <clears throat> excuse me, nicely even. So every time you collar, go back over and do just another little compression pull to make sure that it's nice and even. 
Now, once you have a thrown piece, uh, quite often you might have a little bit of off-centeredness. If you look at this uh, edge right here, you can see it's got a little bit of a wave to it. If you want to be a little bit more precise and make it um, totally even, there are two methods of trimming that I want to show. One is with a needle tool. Now, my students use some shorter wooden handled needle tools. Um, they work just as well. Uh, in, in my uh, classroom studio, we use the wooden handled ones, so if they drop them in their water bucket, they float and they can find them. Now, in the case of using a needle tool, I hold the needle tool in my right hand. So it's going to be similar to making a pull except I'm using the needle tool on the right hand. I am going to touch my left hand to the right hand because I want to be stable. I'm locking my elbows and I find the position where I want to cut it and I make sure that it's going to cut fully all the way around. So I'm probably down about a quarter of an inch. I slowly take that needle tool through until it touched my finger on the left hand and then I pull it off. Okay, so that is one way you can cut the rim. Another way you can cut the rim would be with the cutoff wire. The cutoff wire is uh, another nice way to do it. The cutoff wire, I usually refer to hold it as if it's almost like dental floss, like, you know, it's just a big enough space for the clay wall or for going between teeth. So as it's spinning, I'm going to go down, make sure that I hold it nice and still, so I fully cut all the way through and then pull that off as well. If your wall is a little bit more fragile, you might find that the needle tool works a little bit better for you because you're um, kind of stabilizing it with one of your fingers. Whichever way you want to do uh, for cutting, just make sure that you clean and refine that rim once you've done that. So here I'm just adding water. I'm refining it with my sponge a little bit. I'm going to take some water out of the interior. Make sure that the slip does not look like it's thick or messy. And then if I wanted to use this, say, as a drinking vessel, there is one other trick, and that is going to be I, I want to use a chamois. Now, a chamois is a piece of soft, thin leather that once you wet it, it becomes very soft and flexible. I refer to it as flibbly. It becomes all flibbly when you, when you use it. Then I'm going to hold the chamois over the right-hand side very gently, wrap it around. Remember, it's all wet. And that has made the rim super duper smooth. I just make sure I don't have any funny slip lines there. And this is just throwing a straight cylinder. Now, if you have uh, a straight cylinder and you want to shape it, I will show that next. But let's talk about trimming up the bottom edge. Where it flares out sometimes, you want to eliminate that. So if you hold a wooden knife very stably, if you haven't been able to pull it all up, you can trim off a little bit of that just with the blade of the wooden knife. And then I'll slide that flat underneath, underneath that little ring of clay and then just trim that off. And there we go. Now, the reason for that is, number one, it makes it easier to pick up off the bat. Number two, it's less to trim later on. If you wanted to put maybe a slight bevel or an undercut, you could also take that wooden knife and give it a slight undercut. Some people love to trim feet. I personally love trimming. Some people don't like to trim feet and they want to get everything done on the day that they throw. And that is perfectly fine. There's not a right way or wrong way. It is a personal decision of what you like the best and the, what you like in your aesthetics of your forms. Now, if this were one of my beginning students, I would tell them to just write their initials in the slip on the bat, put the bell uh, of their class and take the whole bat and put it in the cabinet. Let's talk about how do you get a bat off of these uh, wheel heads. If your bat is smaller than the wheel head, sometimes people have a hard time getting their fingers underneath there. Um, sometimes I just recommend taking 
say something like the little edge of a rib, find where one of the bat pins, bat pin holes are and put it close to that bat pin hole. You will then break the suction of the vacuum that's there and then you'll be able to remove the bat. Oh, one other thing that you should do though, prior to removing it, is you should cut it with the cutoff wire pressed firmly against the bat. Always make sure it's pressed firmly against the bat. The big mistake that beginners make is sometimes they just let it ride up or they just do this and they're not pressing down firmly. You gotta press firmly because you don't wanna cut through the bottom of your piece. Okay, then this will do well to just sit for a few hours, sit off to the side and get leather hard before it gets trimmed. And a super quick recap of the steps so far. I anchor the ball, I center the ball by using coning to help center the clay. Then I will open it and steady the wall. Here I want to show you a different way to start pulling your wall. So once your clay is re-centered after you've opened it, remember I squeeze side to side with my left hand, the left fingertips on the inside, left thumb is on the outside, and I push down with the sponge with the right hand. Then there's another little trick that I wanted to show of how you can start your pull up your wall if you want to uh, have maybe a slightly easier pull than this. If I maintain my finger pressure as I'm recentering the wall, I can just squeeze upward, and that is another way to pull your wall up. So again, hands are locked together because you want it to be super stable. My left thumb is on the outside, my left fingertips on the inside, and then my right hand was stabilizing the top edge. So just another alternative for pulling up your wall so you can find whatever way works best for you. And remember that the wall is always thicker at the bottom until the last few pulls, like right here, where you have to really thin out the base of the wall to get the wall a nice even thickness top to bottom. And just a reminder about that slow and steady release. If you take your hands off of clay quickly like that, you're going to throw it off or perhaps pinch your top edge unevenly. So after a slow steady pull, remember to stabilize that top edge. And there I'm just trimming it. And then check out the next video in my series where I will show how to shape the cylindrical forms into something a little bit more interesting.